What's up everyone, Willie Apple here, and today Apple has released iOS 18 to everyone, and in this video I'll be showing you what is new inside the software. We've got quite a bit to talk about, let's get started. Alright, so the first one you can see right here is that we have a redesigned home screen. You can see you can now move icons to the bottom, which is really nice to see. And along with that, we can now make our icons dark. So if we were to go to edit and then customize right here, you can make your icons light like they were before in iOS 17 and older. Dark, which is going to make everything dark automatic which will basically go with whatever setting you have right now so i have my phone set to dark mode right now so we'll set the icons to light when it's in light mode and dark when it's in dark mode and then you can make your icons tinted as well so basically what this does is if i wanted my icons to be uh, whatever color this is greenish bluish i can do that and i can also set them to be blue which means they'll all look blue or even go all red which looks kind of nice for some icons not so nice on other icons and along with that you can make your icons large so making them large will basically make them bigger and they're also easier to tap but they'll also remove the app's name from the bottom so what i'd like to do here is i like to set mine to small and then dark mode icons and along with that you can tint your wallpaper so you can make it darker or you can keep it lighter than it was before. Personally, me, I like keeping it a little bit darker. And along with that, if we go into edit right here, then we can now manually edit pages a lot easier. Whereas before, we tapped and hold, we would need to tap down here to get to the edit pages. You can do whatever you want now, which is really nice to see. And along with that, you can now resize widgets. So just by dragging it like that, you can resize widgets to be bigger, smaller. Maybe if I want this widget right here to look like that, you could just do that. It's a lot easier to change the size of the widgets. And along with that, if you were to tap and hold on a widget, let's say the time widget, since that supports multiple sizes, you could change it all the way down from the app icon all the way to the small widget and all the way back to the medium widget. So it's just a lot easier to change the widget sizes on iOS 18 now. Now the next change has to do with the lock screen. We got a couple of changes with the lock screen here. So if I were to tap and hold on the lock screen, go to customize and then choose lock screen right here, you can see we can now choose whatever icon we want down here. So if I were to remove these icons, you can whatever you want. So you can make it open up an app. For example, if I wanted to open up the best app in the world, Willy Widgets, you can make it open up Willy Widgets just like that. And when we tap and hold it, we can now open up Willy Widgets by just tapping and holding on it. And you can just put whatever icon you want in. And third-party apps can even choose whatever icon they want to put down there as well. So if you have a third-party app that wants to support it, they can put your icon down there. Or you can just remove them outright if you wanted to. Along with that, we got a brand new wallpaper. It's called iOS 18. That There are five different variants. And they're also dynamic. So if I wanted to choose this one, it will. you could swipe between styles if you wanted to. So here's a dynamic one I was talking about. You can make it go into light or dark mode, even if you are on the opposite mode. And you can even add a depth effect on or off once again. And this one just changes throughout. Now next up, we have a brand new app that will probably kill off a lot of password apps. We have a dedicated app for our password. So if you save stuff inside of your iCloud keychain, it will all show up right here. It's integrated throughout iOS. And all your passwords are in here, including your Wi-Fi passwords, even pass keys, and passwords that require security codes. Now while security codes isn't a new feature inside of iOS 18, it's extremely nice that all your passwords and everything are now in a more convenient spot. In fact, they have been removed in settings. We'll get over its settings in a little bit. It's just really nice to see that our passwords are inside of a dedicated app and even locks with Face ID or with your passcode or Touch ID if you wanted to. And it sticks across all your devices, including iPhone, iPad, Mac, and Vision Pro. Now, the next thing has to do with the control center. We got an updated control center. You can see we have multiple pages now. So if we were to scroll down, you can customize the control center just like like you can with your lock screen by tapping and holding and then adding a control. And just like with the icons on the lock screen, third party app developers can add their own control centers if they wanted to. And I'll do something in those apps. And once again, you can move stuff wherever you want. You can move an icon down there. And just overall, a lot easier to manage your control center to make it the way you, you like it. And you can even resize icons pretty easily just by doing this. Along with that, it's now easier to turn on and off your airdrop. For example, if I want to turn it off or turn it back on, or even if I tap and hold, it's a lot easier to get to your airdrop and connectivity settings. In fact, if I were to tap right here, it's just one tap to get into your connectivity settings, one tap to go into your Bluetooth settings, one tap to get into your airdrop settings. It's just so much better now instead of iOS 18 and so much faster to configure these settings. Along with that, we got a bunch of brand new control center toggles that I'd like to show you here. The first one is that you can now run any shortcut by just tapping on it. You can now open up any app. 
You can now translate immediately just by tapping on an icon. You even have a dedicated control to get into your print center. And a new feature inside of iOS 18, tap to cache, which we will also get into this video in a little bit later. And we also have some brand new accessibility control center toggles that I like to talk about here. Voice control, assistive touch, background sounds, live listen, headphones levels, level speech, reduced motion, invert. If you have an action button on an iPhone 15 Pro, iPhone 16, iPhone 16 Pro, you'll be able to use any of these control center toggles inside of the action button. So it's much nicer to see. And third party apps can use the action button as well. And last but not least, you can now turn off your iPhone inside the control center by tapping and holding this power button. And you can just slide to power off your iPhone. Now next change is that we have a redesigned photos app. So if I were to go inside the photos app right here, you will see it looks completely different. So you can see that if you just scroll up, it's just like we had before, but we did have a removed option right here where we no longer have the days options. We still have the years and the months option though. I guess nobody used the days. Actually, they're all right here, which is really nice to see. And you also have a dedicated people section and memories, just a lot more scrollable. You got your trip section and just overall a lot more organized. And since everyone's photos library is different, you could actually customize what you want to see. By going to customize and reorder, you can reorder what you want to see. For example, if you want wallpaper suggestions on the top, you can put that on the top. You can even hide it if you wanted to. Really nice to see all of these customization options inside of the Photos app that we have inside of iOS 18. Oh yeah, we have a brand new search field as well. So it is redesigned. It looks more like the redesign that we were promised, but you could find some really cool stuff. But the search is just a lot more better now. Now, next change is a feature that has been requested for many years. You can actually hide apps from your home screen. So if I were to tap and hold out an app, you're gonna see a feature that says require face ID. So this will make the app require face ID. So if I were to try open it, it will say face ID required to open chat GBT. And if I were to open it, it's just your average chat GBT. It's just that it now has an extra layer of protection. You can do this with any app on iOS, including settings. And also you could hide apps that you do not want people to see. So first let me unlock the app. And now let me hide Willy study, for example, totally also an app that you should totally get. So if I were to hide and require face ID, it will basically just remove all the widgets and everything and any reference to Willy study will be hidden and we'll also remove all notifications. It will basically remove it from settings unless you go into the hidden app section. So once I hide it, it will remove everything. Basically treat the app like it doesn't exist. It's gonna go in this hidden folder right here inside the app library. You can't even search it, so let me try searching it. So you can see Willy Widgets and my other app that I abandoned is there, but not Willy Study because I've hid the app. And just to show you that it's really hard to see the app, let's go to the app section inside of settings. And you're gonna see on the bottom, there's a hidden app section, which does require you to have face ID. Now, next change has to do with the Safari app. So we got a couple changes here inside of Safari. So the first one is the A icons have been replaced with this icon down here. And we tap on it and we'll try summarizing the page. So when we tap on it, we have our summary right here. And we also have a new feature inside of here called hide distracting items. So if I wanted to not buy the iPhone, I could just tap, tap, and then keep tapping and I could just hide every single element on this web page. And if I want to cancel, I could just press cancel. Or if I want to save the changes, just press done. And there we go. Everything that I hid is now hidden. So now let me reshow all the hidden items to show everything. And there it is right here. We have all the ads and everything that we hid inside of this article. And to get to all of your other options that you had previously, you would tap on these dots right here. And there it is right here. Here are all of your old options, just inside of a much better and more organized menu. And best of all, you can organize what you want to see. So if you want to add request desktop website to your favorites, which basically shows in here, you can see Request desktop website is inside of your favorites. So this is basically your favorite section that you see right here. Now next change has to do with the camera app. So we got a couple of changes here inside the camera app. So first things first, if we were to go inside of a video, let me just press the 60 FPS option for now. If we were to press the record button, we now have a pause option. So if I were to press the pause button, you'll see on the top that it says pause. And it's a lot more prominent than it is on like Android that it's actually paused. And then to continue playing the video, you just press that. You can pause it again, or you can even stop the video altogether, which is really cool to see. And it was really nice that we now have the ability to pause the video, something that we needed for a while now inside of iOS. And another feature is that if we were to edit the video right here, we now have an option right here to change the speed of the video. So if I wanted to change it to 50%, 
it will now be 50%, it's now 50% slower. Makes it a lot smoother, a quick way to do slow motions if you don't want to go in the slow-mo option, which is really nice to see that. Now, next change has to do with the calculator app. The calculator has received a major overhaul here. So first things first, this is what your calculator will look like. And you'll notice that when rotating the calculator to the left, it's just still the basic calculator. But the way to get back to it is you have to tap on this calculator button right here and press the scientific calculator. So let's rotate it here again, which I really like that we now have all these buttons up here. And the calculator is a lot more precise as well. It's a lot easier to see what you're doing. So let's just do 58 uh, plus six times, uh, you could do brackets for example, five times nine plus three. And it's just a lot more prominent with the brackets as well. It's more like a real scientific calculator. I like this a lot. Now we still do not have the ability to change options like right here. What we do now have is a backspace button. So before you would swipe to get to the backspace, but now you just press the backspace button. And you saw right here that we now have a calculator history, as you can see right here. So if you wanted to do some calculations and save them, you can now save them in right here. And now you could also convert measurements. So if I wanted to convert zero cups to liters, I could just do five cups. It will immediately convert it. I can even switch if I wanted to convert cups to liters, just like that, so switch the number around. Really nice to see that we have that ability inside of here. And if you're wondering about completely backspacing everything, as you can see, it's no longer all clear. You just tap and hold the backspace button and it completely clears it for you. And now lastly, inside of the calculator app, we now have math notes, which is a really interesting feature that we have inside of the calculator. So if I were to create a new note, this integrates with the notes app. So this will also appear inside the notes app. Just let's just do 58 plus two is equal to, when I press the equals two, it will show me that it's equal to 60. Let me just zoom that out so you can see it better. But you can see it kind of does it pretty well. I could also do two plus nine, eight divided by two is equal to that. It will do everything I can, but I guess since my handwriting is not the best, it just doesn't know what to do. But this is much better on the iPad, I will say for sure, since the iPad now also has the same calculator app that we have before. So really nice to see that we finally have a calculator app with history and brand new features. And now let's move on to the next feature. Now, next thing added to iOS 18 has to do with the Messages app. So if we go inside of the Messages app and if we tap and hold on a message, we now have brand new reactions. So the old ones have all been redesigned right here and we got some brand new reactions as well. In fact, any emoji can now be a reaction and any sticker that you created can be a reaction now too, which is really nice to see. And along with that, we have a brand new option in here which allows you to send messages later. So if I want to send this message at 7 p.m. today, I could say hi and then press the send button and it will send like that. And you could also delete the message so it doesn't send at all, which is really nice to see. Or you could just edit it before you even send it. And along with that, if you're out in the middle of nowhere and you need to message somebody, you can now use satellite messaging. It works pretty well, I would say. However, you cannot send any images. You can only, you can only send reactions, but at least it works pretty well. And along with that, if you are on a major carrier, you now have the ability to send RCS messages inside of the Messages app, which is really nice to see. The Apple now allows that to happen, which means texting Android users will be a lot better as long as the Android user has RCS on on their side as well. Check to see if you have it, just go into the messages section, go to RCS messaging and make sure this is on and if you're on an apple business account you'll see more options in here related to rcs messaging for business now next change inside of ios 18 has to do with the settings app they completely redid it so it's just reorganized mainly apparently this is what users use the most so people apparently look at their battery settings the most so they just reorganized it a little bit which is okay i guess and they even combined all the apps into one section so it's a lot more organized in here so therefore you're not just scrolling down infinitely basically now next change has to do with a new feature called tap to cash. So if I were to use this toggle right here, and if I had Apple Cash, I would be able to send money to somebody else's phone. So basically kind of like the name drop feature that we got last year, but instead of name drop, it's just airdropping money basically, which is pretty cool to say. And the animation there is actually pretty sick. So I recommend trying it one day. Now next change is that we got a brand new widget for the journal app. So Apple is constantly trying to improve the journal, but not porting it to iPad OS and Mac OS. So if I were to go inside of the journal widget, you can see we have a streaks widget and a new entry widget. 
So what are you focusing on in this moment of making this video right now? And this just tells you how much you have been writing within the past couple of days and this button over here just opens up the journal app and just immediately starts prompting you to start. We also have a brand new widget for overnight vitals and weekly vitals. I'm not sure what vitals are, but if you know what they are, let me know down in the comments. Now, next change is that you can now change the color of text inside the notes app. So if I were to select this text and then press that, and then press this, you can now change the color of your text from to purple, pink, orange, mint, and blue. And doing that, it's now mint color, and you can undo that just by tapping on that. The calendar app now has all of your reminders inside of Reminders app. The app store has a brand new design for apps right here, like the reviews looks much different. You can now see the charts from the search field. The fitness app got a nice redesign and you're even able to edit stuff by pressing the edit summaries and add stuff just like you can with widgets and even reorder them around pretty easily. Inside of the music app, the browse tab is now called new. Notes now has audio transcriptions. And if I were to press this button right here, it's now able to transcript all of my text. The phone app now has T9 dialing. So for example, if I were to press R, I, C, K, you're able to see that you can now search by name. And also if you were to type the actual phone number in here, you could see that it shows up now on the phone app. You don't need to use Spotlight for that anymore. You can now view the transcription inside of a voice memo or even copy a transcription. If you have an external hard drive or a flash drive plugged into your iPhone, you can now easily format it within the Files app. You can express yourself in brand new ways by tapping on this button right here by doing big, shake, explode, boom, small, nod, ripple, and jitter effects. You can even do them on a per character basis. So if you want this one to be big, and this one to be nodding, you can do that as well. And you can even make some of the text bold, italicized, underlined, or even strike them through or combine them all. Now feature number 100 inside of iOS 18 is that inside of a game, we now have a new feature called game mode. This will basically reduce latency between Bluetooth devices and, and try to prioritize all energy towards the game. And if you have AirPods Pro second generation, if Siri asks you a question, you can answer that question by nodding or shaking your head. Your AirPods will also try to isolate all the noise, the unimportant noise on the AirPods. There are now collapsible sections inside of notes. You now have this mental health feature built inside the journal app. You now have the ability to search inside of the journal app. In the Apple TV app, if you have TV Plus, you can now take a look at the actors while watching the show. You can grant certain controls to some of your guests if you have guests coming over to your house. If the 911 dispatcher that you are calling supports it, you can now send videos so you can get the point across right away. Eye tracking accessibility feature, music haptics, vocal shortcuts, you can now connect objects inside of Freeform pretty easily. And those are all the features I can find inside of iOS 18. And I bet I'll find a lot more the more I use the software, and maybe you will as well. If you find any more, let me know down in the comments down below. And thanks for watching. Comment, like, subscribe, share this with your friends. Download my apps in the description down below. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye!